Hi everyone, welcome to History and Science and Religion on Trial. This is Dr. Tracy McCarthy, psychologist, attorney, and educator. We've been talking about the Maori and how important it is to use that term, the Maori, versus simply that anglicized version of more in this discussion. And so we know now that in the Isles, uh, Scotland, Ireland, uh, British Isles, that the Maori Picts were considered the native people in that space. And it's also important to remember, sometimes you will hear that the Maori came from, from Mauritania. Uh, Mauritania is actually named after the Maori. And so what it looks like is that that's just one place name uh, for this particular group of people. And so they went around, almost like that tribe of Dan, naming places uh, after themselves or with words that were related to uh, who they are, that identity. And so we're going to be looking at um, where did this name come from, this Maori name come from? And so there have been a number of assumptions, but we're going to look at this from a different vantage point, focusing again on Maori. And one of the reasons why it is so confusing to identify a number of issues is because again, that changing of the spelling, focusing on different things, uh, taking religion and turning religion into uh, ethnic groups or racial groups. And you saw this in Europe with uh, Christianity, or Catholicism and Islam and what would be considered Hebrew religion. And so you saw where individuals became racially identified based upon religion. And so it's a very odd dynamic, but that's just another way to separate people and keep people confused about who they are. And so people gave up their family identities based upon taking on religious identities. And then you've got a lot of conflation going on. And then you have the uh, ending with ish also, which creates a lot of confusion because as soon as you put I-S-H at the end of something, you are saying that it is akin to or similar to something or in the likeness of something, but you're also separating it from what would be considered the original. And so we're going to just keep it with the Maori without the ish at the end. Um, and we're not going to change that spelling as we are talking about it. So we're going to look now and see who these Maori were. These are people who were chased out of uh, those isles, those European isles. Uh, and these are also individuals where there are indications, there are lots of indications coming up now, uh, that suggest that these are also the people who are considered the American Indians. And we're going to look at some of the research that points to this. And so this does create a bit of chaos uh, because what you have here is you have a group of people identifying themselves as American Indian and also identifying themselves as being distinct from the Maori. Now, part of this confusion might come from using that word more versus using the word the Maori. And so perhaps as people are doing a little bit more research, people may become a little bit more comfortable with the similarities uh, that are reaching all across the globe here related to the Maori. And so again, it's important to just keep an open mind. We're going to dig into this and very quickly look at um, another understanding of the Maori. Before we jump into talking about the Maori, we're going to talk about a historical dynamic and some patterns that have been noted. Uh, one thing that has been noted, and this is related to the Maori, is that you had groups of people uh, in positions of power and uh, very resource rich uh, who were going around the globe uh, stealing things. So they were stealing anything that was not tied down and then some things that were tied down. And so they went around the globe stealing very specific land, resources, and even people. So they were taking people and their lives and they were in some instances reducing the people to an enslaved status. And then in some instances they were doing this replacement demography dynamic where they would switch people in and out. And so the identities would become confused. And so 
they would get a group of people from one geographic space and then transplant them somewhere else uh, and then give them the identity of the new place and then negating the prior identity and also creating confusion because the people who were in the space where these relocated people came, uh, there was confusion with them because you have a group of people coming in who are now taking on the identity of the space as the new native people. And so this created uh, a number of problems and you can see this all over the globe, not just in the Americas. And so the people were removed from specific places and transplanted in specific places. And that's really noteworthy. And so you have people being removed from the European Isles. You have people removed from America, the Americas, uh, the Pacific Island. Um, you have uh, isles there where you had people removed and moved around the Indian Ocean Islands. You had similar dynamics going on in New Zealand and South Africa and India. And so there is a pattern to this long con that has been going on. Now, some people think that the reason why some of this was done uh, was to simply take land from people, but there's more to it than that. And so you do have the stealing of land, resources, and people, but there is a pattern and apparently an end point. And so we're going to look at that end point, but we're going to first talk about uh, the meaning of this word Maori and how important this is in terms of what would be considered the current end game that's going on. So we're going to first look at this definition of Maori that comes out of Thesaurus Plus. And there is a common thread with this word Maori. And again, these are the people who are coming out of the European Isles there um, and also considered being uh, North African. And so you see here that Maori is synonymous with spirit. And so the Maori uh, and it's it's impossible to separate those two that word maori and this word maori you really cannot separate these words they will keep coming up together over and over again and the reason for this is that this word maori is related to it's integral to the maori because it means spirit uh, in their understanding and so it means this immaterial force within a human being that gives life energy and power to the body and so these words are so synonymous spirit and maori that they are basically interchangeable so when you say that someone is maori you are basically saying that someone is spirit and we can see here in the maori dictionary uh, discussions related to Maori and you can see that Maori really relates to this idea of spirit so even if you're talking about spiritual leader you would incorporate the word Maori into this idea of spiritual leader and here you see additional spiritual connotations related to Maori and you see this relationship between this word and the moon on the 28th 9th of the lunar month. And again, here you see additional discussion related to the Maori and you see it means life principle, life force and vital essence. And so this gives a different uh, meaning to this word Maori when you see it in this context. And the Encyclopedia of New Zealand incorporates this word Maori into its understanding in terms of culture. Um, and it indicates again that Maori is the life principle or vital spark. So when an individual is referred to as Maori uh, in this context, then a person is being understood as being that life principle, that vital spark, uh, that spirit power. And here we have a reference to the Maori stone and the Maori stone um, depicts a female ancestor and these stones were believed to retain the Maori or that life force. Okay, so what we're going to do now is look at some depictions of the Maori people. One of the things that happens with respect to these groups of people who have been 
um, taken from their land, moved around, misnamed, renamed, is that there is often a presentation of what the people look like, but it's a very limited presentation. And so people don't see the diversity of the people and they presume that that diversity is not there because it's not presented. And so this is a presentation of some of the diversity of the Maori people. And when you look at them, you can see the phenotype that is shared by many people around the globe. And so each one has a unique phenotype. However, you can see similarities between each of these phenotypes and individuals who are in different parts of the globe and specifically in those places that were identified as being uh, lands that were taken. Uh, these are sort of targeted lands and targeted people uh, by those quote unquote explorers uh, who were going around trying to colonize and globalize uh, the entire world there. So we see that there has been a history of replacement demography, replacing the original with counterfeit uh, throughout this period of dealing with people who have been identified as Maori or with the Maori. Um, and so you have a continuation of this theme that's been going on for centuries. And this is going on now, and it's represented in the depictions of this nativity scene where human beings are being replaced uh, with sci-fi types of images. And so you have a dynamic of uh, humanity being at odds with what would be considered technology. And you also have something that looks like uh, humanity is being replaced by technology. Again, this replacement demography only this time, not with another group of people, but with a totally different entity. Now, those of you who have looked in the community section, you can see that there is an assignment there. If you are listening to this discussion, it is hoped that you will participate in the assignment and watch that video, that film, and then participate in answering the questions, taking some time to really think about the implications of the film and the implications for humanity, for Maori. And so one of the dynamics that you will note in the film and the theme that's going on right now is that you have a man versus machine uh, phenomena going on. Uh, you also have a dynamic of the spirit versus the material. And so it's de there's definitely uh, some sort of battle going on. And that is represented in this nativity scene that again is coming out of uh, Rome. Um, and so you see man versus machine, you see depictions. This is supposed to be Mary um, and the baby Jesus. And it's unclear who the entity is off to the, the right there. And then you have uh, some other sci-fi depictions in the uh, other space to the right. And so again, these depictions really exemplify this idea of a, a new nativity and a new understanding of what it means to be human and also what it means to be spiritual and what it means to have spirit and to be of spirit. And one thing to keep in mind as people are debating about ancestry and about tracing ancestry and about claiming identities is that the world is still going round and round. Uh, things are moving forward. And some of those discussions are actually distractions from what is really going on. And so you do have a battle going on and it's not a battle about uh, who owns what land space. It's a battle about what it means to be human. And it's a battle between that and the Maori. And so the symbolism there uh, in the language and also in the current depictions uh, indicates that uh, humanity is going on a journey, uh, whether humanity wants to go on that journey or not. And it is a journey that includes a battle and uh, another attempt at this replacement demography. And so it's something that people really need to think about. Uh, in terms of this new replacement demography and the implications of it. And so these things are touched on 
in that film. And so hopefully you'll be able to tie together this discussion, particularly the research on the Maori and the implications for those people who are the Maori, uh, tied to the Maori, uh, understood as the Maori, uh, the implications for all of these changes for what be, would be considered the indigenous native people of the planet. And so we're going to continue on this discussion, but again, uh, people are definitely encouraged to watch the film. You can watch it with family and friends and have discussions and then contribute to the discussion. Most people think of advancements as positive things and uh, with anything, you can have good and bad with anything that you do in life. And this may be one of those uh, prime examples. And so you have advancement and you have progress and many people are of course uh, in favor of progress and advancement. The question is at what cost? And it appears that the cost of advancement at this point in time might actually be humanity. It may be that uh, Maori that we are talking about. And so it's important to always do a cost benefit analysis with anything that looks like it's going to be a benefit. Because as you know, there are no free lunches. Nothing comes for free. There is always a cost even if people have not counted up the cost or recognized the cost. Remember, knowledge is power. Take care. See you soon.